I'm Dr. Doreen McCrory. And I'm Krista Croft. In honor of Black History Month, the Black Professional Alliance of My Community College has the honor of welcoming Chef Kisa Smith. We are at My Community College's Culinary Arts Institute, and we are ready to get into this soul food cooking demonstration with Chef Smith. So take it away. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chef Kisa Smith, also known as Chef K. Smith. I'm here today for Black History Month. In honor of Black History Month, we're doing, um, I'm gonna do a demonstration of some favorite dishes that is just known in the African-American community, from fried catfish to grits, like a Cajun style grits. And we're gonna get right to it in a second. I am the owner of Spectacular Spuds, Inc. And I'm also the owner of K. Smith Catering, which I started about eight years ago, right here in the city of Flint. I'm also a former student of my community college and graduate of my community college, so I'm happy to be here. Today, I'm gonna to have uh, Dr. Doreen McCrory assisting me. And today, we're gonna to be, like I said, we're gonna do some fried catfish, some sauteed veggies, a Cajun style um, grits, and I got a couple little surprises in there for you as well. So, we're just gonna get right to it. So I'm gonna get you a set of gloves. Oh, you already got some yeah, gloves on. my gloves. All right. So like I was saying before, I graduated from Mott uh, a little over 20 years ago. So I was in the Mott Culinary Program and Restaurant Management as well. So we're gonna start out with our grits. So instead of using water, we're gonna use chicken broth. And that's to give it its own flavor and texture. We're also gonna be using a heavy whipping cream. Most of the stuff I make is like freehand. I usually know, but you normally use about a cup, cup and a half for the grits that we're gonna be doing. We're also gonna use some heavy whipping cream. Can you get one out of the um, refrigerator for me? Yes. So we're gonna coat the bottom of the pot with grits. We're gonna stir in, we're gonna take a whisk and stir in. Small whisk, all right. As I stir, she's gonna pour in some heavy whipping cream. All right, that's, that'll do for now, yeah. And we're gonna bring that to a boil and let it soak in. So I am a Flint native. I was born and raised in Flint, Michigan. Um, my mother moved us to the Los Angeles, California at a young age, probably 1988. I'm now 42 years old. I'll be 43 in a couple months. So out there, it was so many different cultures. And that's where I kind of got my inspiration for cooking from like Mexican street vendors all the way to even my, um, my stepdad. He was from Monrovia, Liberia. So it gave me a sense of actually being able to um, go in and cook real African cuisine, which they use a lot of palm oil in their cuisine, which I actually have some here today that I brought in. Since a young girl, I always wanted to be a chef, so that's always been a dream of mine, especially growing up here in Flint, Michigan. And in the black community, a lot of us learn how to cook from our grandparents. So that probably was my first example. My grandmother, how about you, Doreen? Exactly, learning from my grandmother, yeah. watching her in the kitchen. Yeah, that's definitely very, very important in the black community, so. And you can see I just added just like a quarter of a stick of butter to this, um, to the grits. So can you grab, we got some sweet potatoes in there, some kale, um, squash. It's already sliced up, she's gonna bring that out. So we're gonna get our sauteed veggies going in a sec. As you can see here, I'm using my Mercer knives, and I'm also gonna be using a couple key ingredients, actually some stuff that's made right here in Michigan, some even that was developed by chefs and cooks that was in Flint. I use a lot of olive oil and avocado oil when I cook, so I try to keep in mind that we are definitely trying to think a lot healthier using different oils or whatnot. Now 
that's so important too because so many people don't think of soul food as healthy no so <laughs> it's a lot of it's a, soul food has a lot of ingredients so you're always kind of um semi all over the place and so you can get, you can gather so many ingredients at once that's the unique part of soul food because it's so many ingredients so today we're going to saute yeah we can set them right here okay. we're going to saute up some sweet potatoes kale squash all in like a vegetable medley sweet potatoes has always been real prominent and key in the black community and soul food is just one of those things that bring people together so that's why I, I got into being a chef i always loved to serve my auntie was telling a story the other day about when i was little i was uh, two years old and i would <laughs> i would push the the um seat up <laughs> into the stove and ask my sister how you want your eggs and she was literally like one years old so she'd be sitting there ready to eat so I, I put my heat on like a medium high so it can get to about 350 before we get to tossing everything again and i'm going to check the grits just coming to a stir we actually going to make a roux that's going to um, go on top of these cajun grits and I'm obsessed with New Orleans cuisine, so I always try to go into, because there's so many different variations to African food and African-American food, and, but each region has their own special, special thing that they do. So, I'm gonna throw some of these sweet potatoes in first. they're going to take the longest to saute so but they're still going to give it a good sweet texture so you said you attended my over 20 years ago yes <laughs> you've Go. accomplished a lot in 20 years you have a very special story you want to share with us a little bit about just your whole history and how you've gotten to where you are now well, I had some, it wasn't always peaches and cream with me. Um, I had picked up some habits from living out in California, some ways to make money real fast, and probably was ordained to do some of the stuff that I ended up doing because some of the things I've been through, it, it created a sense of who I am now. And uh, I don't think I'll be where I am without my story. So I did some time in federal prison camp uh, selling marijuana at a young age, probably sold it a little too long. <laughs> but just some of those habits I developed, just trying to make some money during high school, during college, my college years. Because I actually went straight to college. I'm going to throw these in. Okay. And then we're going to start seasoning them as well. So I'm going to throw some of the zucchini in, squash in. And then we're going to add the kale last. But... I tell my story all the time. It's always been part of who I am, so I definitely have no problem being open about it. Okay. And this is actually some complete seasoning. So we're just going to throw a little bit on there. And this is called Put That On Everything. This is actually uh, Chef Cuevas, a um, good friend of mine. He's from Flint. He's a chef out of Dallas. He does a lot of work all over the country as well. But this is one of the seasonings he created. And you can definitely put that on everything. It has a unique flavor to it. And I always try to use it. You can use it on fish, veggies, poultry, all those things. I love local chefs and using local people. So now we're going to add some beautiful kale. Now normally we would use collard greens or mustard greens, but I thought I'd put my own spin on it because kale was mixed a lot with the greens. Did you know anybody that mixed greens yeah. with kale growing up? It's, kale has a bitter, a more of a bitter taste, but mm -hmm. it's still very, very good. Because when we were growing up, we always had mixed greens. Ooh. 
a lot of times we would mix the collards with the mustard and kind of and add kale. And I'm actually going to turn that down a little bit. We're going to top it off so it can smother a little bit. So I'm going to just mix it up. Then we're going to check on our grits one more time. Then we're going to start on our Cajun mix for the grits. And then we'll also start our catfish. There you go. So like I said, I did go away for some time. And even after going away, I never forgot who I was. I just prayed a lot. Um, I was raised in the church. I was always raised to finish education. Your education was also very important in our household, almost more important than having a family, I would think. <laughs> I was like, they were stressing college more than anything because that was that one thing that um, going through as a child, if you're, if you're black coming up, that's the one thing that can never take away from you is your education. So education was always important to me. So even after I had to go away, I actually went away for about four and a half years to federal prison camp. Um, I taught women how to fill out their financial aid papers while I was there. I held workshops. I uh, wanted to get people back a jump start on their life after going, going home so, we can, um, so I can affect the recidivism rate in, in, the, in this country because we have a, over 2 million people in prison in the penal system right now. Some people are in there for petty crimes or even some people are in there because they can't get, um, can't get bond. You know what I'm saying? So many different reasons that we need to tap into the penal system and do something different in this country because it'll save a lot of people a whole lot of money, for one, and that's important. Yeah. So you are blessing the people. Even while you are incarcerated, you are still yeah. a blessing and sharing yeah. the message. Sh trying to share something. I wanted to really be a different woman upon coming home, so it was important to me to uh, teach. I actually was a um, teacher. I did... Uh, I was a praise dance instructor, so I kind of, kind of revamped myself even before coming home. So, so that was special for me. And you know, my has a last chance pal program where we even have classes in one of the correctional facilities here in Michigan. Okay. Yeah. And that is that is very important because this is cooking up really nice. Can you grab me the? Um, we need the peppers and those tricolor onions. Uh, this is. This smells delicious. I wish you guys could really, really be here to smell this. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit more. Now that we got them cooking up, they're gonna saute down really, really, really well. All you do is keep giving your grits a stir. That's the key to keeping them nice and from sticking to the bottom of the pot. And to cook at a low temperature. So cooking was my first love, but also ownership was a big thing of mine. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always knew I wanted to open up a restaurant business. So these things were not new. We're going to use this iron skillet too, which is so important in the black household. And every iron skillet is almost passed down by another, <laughs> by another yes. family member. So every household has one, and it looks like that. And you can tell it's, it's been, been used. used. <laughs> but we need that iron off these skillets. So. All right, so I'm gonna take some onions, some tricolor sweet peppers, and we're gonna um, start our roux for our Cajun sauce that's going on top of the grits. So you basically, you're gonna start it off with some butter. I'm gonna let that cook down just a little bit. We're going to add some palm oil in there, which is like a secret ingredient. Now, I'm not familiar with palm oil at all. Now, palm oil is from, this is what the real Africans use in soups, dishes like that. Um, almost, it's a lot of dishes they use it in. But uh, one of my favorite things to make from Africa is called potato greens. And that one ingredient was missing the last time I made them. And my sister went on Amazon and found this for me. <laughs> so... I was like, is something missing? She was like, I think it's the palm oil. So we're going to use this today as, a, as our root. So we adding some real African roots. 
right into this dish that we're doing. It might be some you can find in Michigan, but I'm not sure. Okay. So after coming home, I went back to school. I finished at Mott. I ended up transferring to uh, U of University of Michigan Flint. Ended up getting a degree there as well. I'm um, a Bachelor of Science in, in Communications and uh, also with a minor in Business. So, so right now we're just letting this saute a little bit, I mean melt down a little bit so we can saute our veggies. So do you think that food and cooking is a symbol of love? Definitely a symbol of love. It's a symbol of coming together. For me, I just love to serve people, and I've always been like that my whole life. <laughs> and I love, for me, it was being able to take care of people without being in the hospital and having to actually watch them go through their transition. So I thought it would be happier, a happier time for me if I could serve in, in this type of form. So, and then I just love art. So I'm going to start with the onions. I always start off with the onions because the onions has the most flavor. Then we're going to add our tricolored peppers. Like I said, we added about a quarter, quarter of unsalted butter. I use unsalted butter on everything. And then we'll also, um, I dropped in some palm oil that we had. So we'll let this cook down. I'm also going to be using some Slap Your Mama today. I use this a lot on anything Cajun, anything that wants a little bit of heat to it. It don't necessarily have to be a Cajun dish, but we're going to just season that up with those. And then we're going to add a touch of Old Bay as well. Can't go wrong with Old Bay with anything Creole or Cajun. And then I'm going to drop a little bit of granulated garlic in there. We're going to let those saute down. We're probably going to add another quarter of butter. And as you can see, the palm oil gives it that red, that red tint you see oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty. Yeah, which actually there's a connection for, um, like, you know, uh, African Americans eating fish and spaghetti. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually one of those things that's originated in Africa as well, from palm oil to, like, they would always eat fish with red sauce. So... So I had no idea. That's where it originated from. Yeah. Yes, it did. So while we're sauteing them up, I'm going to turn them really low. I'm going to check these um, grits one more time. And those are cooking up really, really, really nice. Oh, uh, yeah. In the end, we're going to add some more heavy whipping cream and a little bit of seasoning to our grits. And then we're going to get ready to start this catfish, which will be the last thing we'll cook. Okay. And we're actually going to put that catfish in that iron skillet. So I got that turned down really low. Those are cooking up really well. They're actually almost done. They're good. Then we're going to add another. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. All right, so these can go back. I'm going to check our veggies right now. Oh, they're cooking up really, really nice. So tell us a little bit about your business. I know you mentioned starting your catering company eight years ago, but you're really well known in the Flint area right now. People are excited about your potatoes as well. Yes, yeah, so I started off street vending about eight years ago, like I said before, uh, when I started K. Smith Catering. So I was still a college student at the time as well, because once I came home, I started over. So I totally, I was in college for about five more years while I was starting these businesses. So, cause, so I got to... <laughs> a pretty unique story just based on that alone. Um, we're actually gonna fill this up with some olive oil now. And actually, since these are on really low, I'm gonna trade out. We're gonna put our fish in the front skillet instead of the back. This is my Le Crusette. <laughs> 
wear. My sister got me that for my birthday. I mean, actually for Christmas, I think. Oh, really? I remember one of them holidays. They always give me nice gifts. That's a great gift. Yes. Can never go wrong with stuff you're going to have forever. So when they put that on like a medium heat, and like I said before, we use extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil and most of the things that I actually fry on the stove if I don't use the air fryer. I'm just gonna fill this up with about a cup and a half of oil. So they're not gonna be totally deep fried, but they're not gonna be so much at the top as well. So, but yeah, I started that business. After street vending, I started K Smith Catering. My pastor was the first one to give me a job. <laughs> and I think we did really well. Ooh. My mother actually started a lot of my businesses with me. I brought her out of retirement, and um, she helped me a lot. And that was a blessing just to, for her to see her daughter's dreams come true. Uh, it had to be really a blessing for her. Can I get that um, heavy whipping cream? So we're going to add some more heavy whipping cream, about a quarter cup. It's going to give our grits a nice texture. And the last thing I did want to add some, while that fire is heating up, I'm going to add some garlic. Cut up a few cloves of garlic, I'm going to add it to this saute mixture that's going on top. I usually add my garlic last because garlic burns a little bit every time you, <laughs> you cook it. But, yeah, so my inspiration for spuds actually came from a business that used to be in Flint, and um, it was called the Potato Patch. And when I discovered that I wanted to do it at the farmer's market, which was literally right after my sister's wedding, came up with the idea the next day. The next day? <laughs> the next day, because her wedding was there. Her wedding reception was there. She actually got married in St. Thomas. But... We, um, I came up with the idea that that next day, and I'm just cutting these down, I'm slicing them, and then gonna give them a half cut. So they'll be like quarter chopped, not so much smally, smaller, finely chopped. So they'll cook down in the roux really, really well. So, can you grab that catfish out of there for me? Yes, sure will. So, we got some large catfish fillets. I'm actually going to clean this off so I can cut those in half because they're actually super huge. But I had them freshly cut, skinned, and filleted. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, some huge catfish, perfectly cut catfish. So, fresh out the sea. <laughs> okay. So, here we go. Thank you. So, I'm just going to whisk this around. Oh, this smells delicious. It smells so good. So, yeah. So, I wanted to reinvent something that was in Flint, get people excited about their childhood again, and... That's where Spuds came about. So I actually started my business my last year of college as far as the one that's a standing restaurant. And I think some of my classmates didn't realize, like, I have to go to work <laughs> at certain times and I had to leave. So I wasn't always there to study with them, with, but I always showed up for the projects. Okay. I always came and aced the projects and did my part in groups because whether you're in a uh, communications major or I'm going to turn this on low communications major or even a, um, and turns our grits off they actually have a great texture going right now or business major you're going to be put in groups constantly yes yeah which is a, which is a great thing because I love working with people and then it gives you a sense of n knowing people personality and all those great things so I'm going to cut this off 
because I teach all the marketing classes. And so we definitely have group projects and presentations because we want the students to have that real life, that practical, that practical application, not just the academic, but you're taking the scholar and the practitioner and bringing them together. So it's yes. good to hear that you like that. Yes. A lot of students don't like their group no, they projects, don't. but they they're like, really I, don't, I said, but this is what you're going to be in in the real life. You're yeah. going to be put in a lot of groups and all of those things, so you don't want to get away from it. So that real world experience. Today, I'm going to use, I'm using a batter that I actually, some of it is created, some of it was already made. Okay. We're actually using a brand called Fish Crack, which is actually made in uh, Michigan. So it's a Michigan brand. They, they have chicken crack, um, seafood crap, all, all kind of different cracks. <laughs> <laughs> but I added some of that, added some flour, added some regular, um, well, not regular, I would say uh, buttermilk, buttermilk um, cornmeal. And I added some seasonings like granulated garlic and a couple other things. So that I'm just going to lightly season our fish. So the black community definitely, we, this is like one of our favorite fish growing up, people with fried catfish. A lot of my um, family members and or neighbors, we, my mother and hung out with our neighbors a lot, which were very good people. Big Dad, rest his soul, he used to make, uh, he used to go and fish, and he taught us how to fish. So we would go, come downtown on the riverfront, fish, and we would just catch the fish. We would watch them skin it, cut the heads off, and fillet it, and then they would fry it, so. Did you so. have a lot of fish fries? When y'all were coming up? Yes, yes, definitely. A lot of fish fries, a lot of uh, chicken fries, even though they don't call it that. But I'm going to slap a little bit of slap your mama on these. I'm not going to season them too much because our batter is already seasoned. And then I'm going to put a little bit of, put that on everything. Then I'm also going to put some. Tony's on there as well. Tony's and complete. Can I? Can you hand me that complete seasoning again? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Complete is one of those good flavored seasonings that can also go on everything. So we're gonna take that. I'm actually gonna make a batter. Let's check our. I'm gonna check our oil real quick. Usually I just throw a little bit of the batter in the oil. If it fizzes up, usually the oil is about ready. So right now I'm going to make a, um, a batter mixture. So it'll be going in some 2% milk and egg. It's going to give it a, our fish a really crispy texture. And we'll be, uh-oh, we dropped our egg. Take the whisk. So you put the egg and the milk together to make a mixture before you put the, the batter on? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to dip our fish today. This up really well. So you just take, dip, and then we're going to dump it right in. I usually like to use the bag because it coats the fish very well. And this batter is very hot, so we should get a good texture from this fish. And we're going to throw it in very quickly. So when you're frying to make sure that it crisps up, how hot should the oil be? It should be at least at 350. I like mine. I prefer mine at 400 sometimes, just depending on how fast you have to go. But we work under pressure so much at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I understand there's always a line outside the door waiting for you to your potatoes at the farmer's market. Yes, that's just totally a blessing that we, uh, everybody love what we do. We make everything from scratch at the restaurant. I think that's what makes us so unique. Down to our Alfredo sauce, everything is made from scratch. Wow. So you just drop your fish in. After I drop the fish, I'm going to test everything. We'll start plating everything in a second. Nice. But yeah, we also, we got a couple of accolades. We won Minority Business of the Year in 2018. 
Um, we've been interviewed by Inc. Magazine, all sorts of different outlets. Um, I've been to the Governor's Mansion twice. I've also been invited as a friend and assistant cook at uh, the J Free Larry Hoover concert that was put on by Kanye and Drake. Oh, wow. By actually um, attending with Chef Willie Wallace, who's a good friend of ours that's also from Flint, Michigan. But he's uh, Kanye's head chef. So, Is he? Okay. Yeah. So he always try to make sure we can, if we in town, we can come to the events and attend everything with them. So I'm going to use these tongs so we can start turning over our fish. So that's pretty exciting. You've been recognized not just in Flint, but within the state and nationally. Oh, perfect. Yes, it's been a blessing. I can't really say that I've had a really, really good life from childhood on and after prison. So I've, I've been very blessed. I've had a lot going on. My mother was a total blessing. I did lose my mom a couple years ago um, in 2020, but she instilled so much in us. I always say she raised some soldiers is what we like to say. <laughs> we like to use that term. She's been very, very pivotal in all the things that I've learned as an adult, as a child. My father as well, I don't want to take away from my dad as well. Both my fathers, I had a great stepfather, I had a great father. So I won't say take away from any of them. They all were just good, really, really good people. That's a and blessing, not like just to have your father, but to have your bonus father as well. Yeah. Have strong parents to support yes. you. And people getting along, all those things are very important especially in the black community. Some of those things that we don't show as much, but it's definitely going on. Just having those mixed families and um, coming together as and making it work. Just blended and strong. Blended families, yes. And even when you mentioned the culture, learning different uh, types of foods being introduced through your stepfather and his. Yes, he was a, he definitely, he was, he was very pivotal in, in all those learnings, all those techniques we had. So I'm going to just keep everything separated. I'm going to start plating everything. What would you say to some young women out there who may have been sidetracked or want to become a chef or an entrepreneur, not really sure how, don't really have the confidence or think that maybe their history could inhibit them from being successful? What would you say? I definitely would say keep going, try to create. All of us don't have a support system, right? I've been blessed to have a great support system, but I also created my support system as well. So I would say just keep fighting through any circumstances that you go through. Um, it can be anything. Some people have experienced death, a lot of death around them. Some people have experienced uh, sexual assault. You got all so many different variations. Some people have had battles with, um, with drugs. So we don't want battles with addiction. We don't want to dispute anybody. We want everybody to know that they're loved. Some people just had parent issues, you know? Parents didn't believe in them or it worked a lot, you know? We're going to set this down. Oh, that looks awesome. I wish you guys that could smell so this. That looks so good. So we turned that off. We also turned the, turning the fish over. The fish is getting a nice texture. Nice, nice, nice. Very crispy. And you gotta, you gotta be able to cook too in the black community. We don't, we don't play about the food. That is true, <laughs> that is true. We do not play about the food, so it's hard. So I knew I was going into a hard business because I'm like, hey, you know, it's gonna be hard to please them. Yes, yeah. we'll let you know if it's not good. If it's not good. So these, all oh, these grits are perfect texture. I'm actually not going to season them too much. I'm going to just season a little bit, a little bit of slap your mama in there. Not too much at all. You'll get all the flavor from the sauteed veggies. So this fish is almost done. I'm going to take a towel and clean up over here as soon as we let that fish out we'll plate everything together and we'll be done okay 
when we think about when you think about Black History Month, what is something that comes to mind for you? Um, just the for me, I I love the struggle of the of the black community because we have so much to be proud of. Yet um, the the things sometimes that we shine upon are the things that makes us great, if that makes sense. So I I'm always proud coming out of. I love our stories, and everybody has a different story, you know, and it's so, and that's, that's to me the most unique thing about being black, you know, it's, it's our, our stories are really, really foretelling, and it shows how strong of a people we really are. All you got to do is understand us a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. One thing I think about a lot is that, you know, black history is American history, and it's not just for black history. No, it's, it's 365. Not. You know, it's something that should be celebrated and acknowledged every day, all year, not just on one month. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, that looks good. So I turned them down a little bit. We'll be taking them out in like the next two minutes. Okay. But it's it's definitely uh, one of those things I'm going to go ahead and start plating my grits. You had mentioned earlier in the conversation that when you were in culinary school, there were more men, more males in culinary school back then. Yes, definitely. It was dominated by males, ironically. You know, I think a lot of the women during that time were going into um, nursing, all of those things. And you see culinary arts way more popular now than ever. You know, a lot of people are doing it doing the culinary thing. Ooh, these are perfect grits. A lot, a lot more now, and which I'm, I'm proud of because I wanted to see some more people enter into this industry because it's really a unique industry. It's, it's a way of life. It's a work of art. And we want to take heed and be proud of that. I love, I love to create. And like I said before and over and over, I love to serve people as well. Oh, these are going to be really, really nice. I was going to add crab meat to it, but since one of our fellow individuals is allergic, we won't do that. And the fish looks like it's about done. What do you say when you're traveling around the country when people say, oh, you're from Flint, Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> we get that a lot. It's always... They know it's by the water or maybe some rappers from back in the day or General Motors, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get a lot of people migrated from the south. Uh, these are nice and golden brown. It's usually how I like my fish. Perfect. But a lot of people uh, migrated from the, from the south and came up here for work, especially in like the early 1900s when uh, Ford, and places like that were the only ones that were actually hiring blacks as well and hiring them straight out of high school, just like everyone else. So GM was like very pivotal in the Flint community and uh, in Michigan as well. Some of the best cars were invented right here in Flint and designed right here in Flint. So we got a lot to be proud of. We got a really, really deep rooted history. So you can't take that away. Uh, you can't have a nice dinner in African American community without some type of cocktail or champagne at the end of the day. So I've paired this with a bottle of mo. Absolutely. So what's next for you? So um, right now we're in the process of we're opening up our second restaurant. I also bought a trailer, so we're going to be putting a trailer together for mobile mobile food. We'll hopefully we'll have that on the east side of Michigan. I'm hoping to open up one more spuds and then we're going to take it to the next level by eventually franchising it. You can have your own. Like I would love to see uh, spuds, a spectacular spuds, people coming and getting their signature baked potatoes, their shrimp alfredo baked potato, their Philly steak baked potato right there in Japan, right at the airport. So I have huge dreams. I, I would consider myself a small city girl with huge dreams. And I thrive on me having the background that I have and me coming from the Brown family and the Dawson family and the Smith family and the Jones family, all these families that made me who I am today, um, which I hope I'm a unique individual and I hope I save a lot of lives in the process because, like I said, I love to take care of people. And this was my way 
of saving lives without having to watch people go through that transition of passing away. So for me, it's a labor of love. Um, after we complete those restaurants and have those franchises, I would like a couple high-end restaurants that I totally designed from scratch one day. So that'll be, that'll be really dope. And um, just hoping to keep serving my community because that's what I love to do. I love to give back. Um, we do uh, give giveaways during Christmas. I've done, uh, I've done a lot of things, so I want to add some more to that portfolio, the philanthropy part of it. And I hope I just, you know, go very far in life, and I hope that the people that I meet go very far as well. Well, on behalf of the Mott family and BPA, the Black Professional Alliance for Mott, we thank you, we appreciate you, and we are proud of you. So, Scott, thank the you. Living. Thank Good you. Life. Thank you so I really much appreciate for the cooking demonstration. I appreciate it. <laughs> go Mott Bears. Yes. <laughs>